Welcome to Smart Villa Life. Here we talk about convenient home automation and how to make your house smart, like I have. Uh, today we will talk about how we will sense the elements, or you rather get some temperature values from your sensors. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, we will start with saying that I have some sensors. I have some temperature and hydro sensors. Uh, throughout the house and in my garden and I also have a multi sensor and a very sure sensor as well and I utilize this in various flows a little bit to know about what the current temperature is and uh, how the climate is changing and what to wear and, and also be warned if something has turned to extreme I mean I have fire alarm, alarms and so but why not get notified if something's starting to get a little bit odd? And I will show you all that and how you will do it with your homie. Yes, guys, this is a multi-sensor 6. Uh, this is the one I use to... Uh, it basically is very important in my home automation since there is a lot... You can buy a lot of cheaper of these ones. and uh, But this is a high quality one according to me. So basically my entire house all my lights are depending on this sensor so I bought this one and I have it inside uh, next to a window so it, I can't really rely on the temperature there because it really gets really hot but it's very dependable when it comes to the lux uh, or light uh, intensity so I know how uh, how bright it is outside and it's really nice actually. So I this is a quite convenient one. It, it measure temperature, light, humidity, vibration, UV. I don't use all those features. I only use the light one. But uh, yeah, that's it for this one. And I also have many many of these actually. Uh, this is because they are very cheap. Teldus, uh, ter thermo and hy hydro sensors and they go over the 433 megahertz protocol and yeah they're very cheap so i bought many of them i have have them have them on different places i even plan to buy more i want one in my fridge and in my freezer and so on so keep those values as well but uh, that's for further down the line actually so i will show you how i use these two uh in my different flows so, Get a quick view uh, in my in my office. I have this sensor um, right next to my uh, window. This sensor can actually be attached. I can only use batteries, but they drained very fast. And I know that there is update the firmware and will drain slower. But I got tired of it, so I plugged in a cable to it. <laughs> since I have it inside. Yes, when it comes to my other ones, I have them in my garden. Uh, I have my shed temperature and my outdoors temperature, which is very useful in various ways. The shed ones I use to control the radiator I have in my shed to keep a steady temperature there during uh, winter time, actually. So let's go to those flows and see how, how I have done it. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, I think if I search for shed, I should get monitoring logic here for my shed temperature variable. Um, here you can see when the temperature have changed, uh, I get attached this temperature to the flow. And if that temperature is greater than minus one, so if this if it's really really cold and it gets up to minus one, <laughs> maybe it'd be weird for you who lives in hotter countries, but uh, the actual temperature can be below, below minus up here in the Nordics. Then, if this value uh, is true, then uh, this is triggered. The shed coldness, or should translate this to, is uh, turned to false, so it's not considered cold anymore. 
and the radiator is turned off and I also get the notification that the heat is turned off and the temperature and the status of the radiator is sent to my telegram. It also uh, notifies to the log that the radiator has been turned off. So if something goes wrong, I can check it later. Then I have this, this, this works together with this one, which is the cool shed warning. It's basically the opposite. When it gets, the temperature goes down, the temperature goes below minus two, then and it's considered uh, not cold. And now it is cold, then it's set this value to be cold, dark, uh, coldness, or she, and then I'm notified the shed is cold right now and it has attached the temperature. Then it turns on the radiator. So uh, I basically keep the temperature above minus two all the time but the radiator is off as soon as it's above one minus one uh, this is because i want to keep the all my belongings in the shed in a, uh, in an okay temperature it shouldn't be too cold because otherwise it could get damaged and so on uh, i have another uh, cool uh, flow that i use called extreme temperature warning that uh, if my very sure uh, kitchen sensor is less than 15 or greater than 35 it actually never gets hotter than 35 in here uh, even we have had the hottest summer in Sweden ever I think oh, for a very long time at least and it never even got close to 35 in indoors even though it's a, a quite hot house if there's something is broken or if something gets starts to burn or something like that I'm getting notified right away to telegram and I get this uh, warning temperature is extreme and it's it posts me my office temperature and my kitchen temperature so I will get notified where the heat is and what it's how it is in relation to different parts of the house and I get this if this occurs it will trigger all the time it will trigger 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 so I will get notified how the temperature develops uh, then my I might even can call the fire brigade or something where I can realize that what is broken act fast basically to be notified that something is wrong in my house uh, that's always secure to know that your temperature is always okay at home and you will be notified if it's not yes here is another uh, really useful and frequently used flow it's basically when the luminance of my uh, multi-sensor is uh, changed uh, when the luminance is greater than my threshold which is set to three or five hundred i think luminance then and all these variables are okay like they should be and then set this variable to this and uh, to put them onto false all these values and I will get notified sun goes down it actually sun is setting and will post me the luminance value uh, after greening which is the sun has risen so a lot of flows is triggered by this variable so I have many flows that is triggered if this is turned to true or if this is turned to false uh, a lot of flows is triggered due to that so my luminance doesn't control my my lamps directly it, it controls a variable which in turn control all the lamp and pendants flows basically so that's how you can control your house using this uh, multi-sensor which is great that's it um, that was all I have to say about how you can adapt your home and your home automation based on how the the world outside is changing and you, your house adapts to temperature and lights and so on. You can probably do a lot more than this. And please, my question of the day is how can I do that? How can, how can I adapt my house when the elements are changing like temperature and so on? I would like to some uh, in the future uh, buy one of these uh, weather stations so you can have more information about air pressure and such and, and keep that logging those and even notify you about that so if you like this one uh, give it a like uh, if you want more weekly content like this one please consider to subscribe thank you